Awesome. Awesome. The glory is so strong in this place. As I started to come from the house, I started to feel the glory of God soaking in on my life. I, I started to, to, to know that God wants to truly do something remarkable today. But I told my team of protocol, I said, we about to have an amazing service today. We want to look into a subject that a lot of pastors and church leaders don't usually uh, want to talk about. We want to look into the very powerful, profound subject about the activity of demon spirit within the church. I'm already in the book of Luke chapter number 13 and from verse 10 to verse 17 it encapsulates the story of a woman which the Bible says had a spirit of infirmity. The Bible says Jesus was going in the temple and he was teaching and a woman was there and she had a, a strange disease. In the natural eyes, the disease that this woman had was supposed to be a medical issue. But in the eyes of Jesus, it was in fact a demon spirit. The Bible says Jesus was able to go beyond the surface. And Jesus said she had a spirit of infirmity. The woman was Dealing with a strange sickness. And the Bible says that the sickness was caused by a spirit. She was sick in her body. She was bent over. Her bone had become ruptured. And the Bible says it was caused by a spirit. And, and, and you need to understand how every abnormal circumstance is caused by a spirit. I'm about to expose the devil tonight. And, and the devil don't like to be exposed. Too many believers and too many preachers don't like to talk about demonic operation. They don't want to mention it. It's like poking the beehive. And the pastors and the leaders and and the preachers don't want to mention that part of the church. And it looks like it's easier for the people of God to come to service. And to hear a really good word. A nice teaching about God. And not know nothing about the works of the enemy. And you remember that I've shared with you here on this mountain. That you need to approach your faith from two dimensions. The Bible says, resist therefore the devil and submit to God. You need to have the understanding and the revelation of resisting the devil and submitting to God. Because if you were to only submit to God and you do not resist the devil, you're going to have a partial victory. If you, if you resisted the devil and you did not submit to God, you're still going to have a partial victory. And, and that's why the Bible says. Resist the devil. And submit to God. The devil wish that many believers. Remain ignorant. About how he's operating. And how he's moving in the earth. How he's moving in the church. And that ignorance. Is causing us a lot. If you choose to be ignorant. If you choose to live in ignorance about the whys and the tactics of the enemy, that ignorance will cost you a whole lot. I remember one time I was traveling from one nation to the other. And I had two bags, actually three bags. And I was trying to go from one terminal to the next. I was trying to catch my gate. And a lady, a very wonderful lady, she noticed that, you know, the anointing of God was on me. I don't know what, whatever attracted her. But she said, can I help you pick up your bag? 
cannot help you. Nobody wants to help you at the airport to pick up your bag. You know, when you have too many bags, nobody offers to do that. Okay? In fact, the, 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 the airport authority, they keep announcing, do not take bag from anybody. But this woman offered to help me to pick up a bag. So I was grateful. So she didn't have anything on her. So she picked my bag, one of them, and I was able to take the other two. And we were talking towards the aircraft. And I was talking to her about Jesus. And she said, oh, I'm a believer too. In fact, I felt the Lord told me to help you. And, and I don't know you before, but I sensed the anointing on your life the moment that I saw you. And I just wanted to, you know, let you know that, you know, she was talking to me about the love of God. I said, listen, I'm a minister and I appreciate. And I was talking to her and she was talking to me and it was wonderful. And then when we got to the point that I was going to leave, I decided to look into my bag. And then I found one of the books that I had written. And the title of the book is, I take authority over you Satan nobody here has seen that book I wrote the book about 15 years ago and when I brought the book out and I gave it to her I said listen I don't I, I, I want to bless you with this book it's one of the books that, that I had written and and the title is I take authority over you Satan so she she, she she took the book I was still trying to autograph the book and she threw the book back at me and I said why she said, I don't want to have nothing to do with this book. I said, why? He said, because you can see Satan is on it. I said, that is the spirit of ignorance. That is what the devil wants. Too many believers, many people within the churches are trying. God help me with this microphone. They are trying to ignore the operation of the devil. And, and that's the strategy of the devil. The devil does not want you to be aware of his tactics. The devil wants to hide. I love the way Maurice Sarullo puts it. He said, to ignore the devil is to, is to invite him to operate. To ignore the devil, uh -huh, hear this somebody. To ignore the devil is to invite him to operate. Whenever you ignore the devil, you invite the devil to operate. The devil loves it when the church folks are ignorant. The devil wants to be able to come into the church and do what he wants to do. And the people keep making excuses and take thinking it was just natural circumstances that's causing things to go ugly and things to go crazy. My God. The devil wants to come into your home and he wants to do things against your children. He wants to turn the marriage upside down and he wants the believer to continue to think that maybe I didn't do something right or maybe I didn't do something well. Maybe something came on my children. But we understand by the word of God that everything that's abnormal, it has a demonic root. The Bible says Jesus God in the temple. God help me. And Jesus found the woman who had a medical issue and this woman was bent over and, and it was a demon spirit. I come tonight in the name of the risen Christ against everything that's going on in your life. Come and help me Jesus. That seem like it's just a natural circumstance or it's a medical issue or it is even a psychological related issue but it has a demonic undertone. I God I come tonight in the name of Jesus against every spirit that's moving. I'm going to begin to bind some spirit. I can take two to three minutes just to focus on binding spirit. The Lord taught me that everything that's abnormal it has a satanic sponsor. The devil is behind it. The devil is fueling it. It looks like it's normal but it's not normal. Everything has a demon backing up. Some of you don't realize what I'm saying but cancer is a demon. Am I talking to somebody right now? Cancer is not just a disease. Cancer is a demon. I come tonight. I 
bind the spirit of cancer. Some of you don't get what I'm saying. Depression is a demon. I come tonight. I bind the spirit of depression. I know the devil don't want me to preach this message, but I feel the Holy Ghost is here. I come tonight. I bind every spirit of mental illness. God help me tonight. Autism is a demon. Children acting crazy is the work of demon spirit. I come tonight in the lives of those who are watching by television of those who are watching over the internet in the lives of your family members. I bind every spirit of autism. Some of you don't understand that divorce is a demon. I come in the name of the Lord. I bind the spirit of divorce in the city of Toronto, in Canada, in North America. Some of you don't understand that not nightmares, schizophrenia, not sleeping at night, it's a demonic attack. I come tonight, I declare and decree every demon that's creeping to your house, coming on your home in the dead of the night to harass you. I shut it down by the Spirit of God. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Some of you don't understand that this unity breaking in churches. Hallelujah. This called in churches. Rumor mongering. Some of you don't understand that backbiting it is a demon and all these are not just natural causes. It has a demonic undertone. I come tonight. I'm buying every spirit of this unity. Every spirit of this call. Every demon that is causing rumor mongering. Every mischaracterization. I bind it. Some of you don't understand. But jealousy and envy and hatred is a demon. Some of you don't get it. But perversion is a demon. Pornography is a demon. Rebellion in children is a demon. I come tonight in the name of the Lord. I shut it down. Some of you don't get it. But poverty is a demon. Some of you don't get it. Hallelujah. Perpetual singleness, barrenness, stagnation. These are demonic spirit. We have authority in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, greater is he that lives on the inside of you than he that lives in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hear me, devil. I stand on this altar. I stand on Christ Jesus. All of the ground is sinking sand. I shut down demonic activity over your life, over your family, over your children, over your grandchildren. I war in the spirit. My God, you're not hearing me, somebody. I go to the third heaven. I receive authority over the money power, over every work of the enemy. I command Satan, this atmosphere is not suitable for you to work, for you to perpetuate your diabolical mission. I release fire, I intensify the fire of God. Devil, in this house is a brand of Christians who are on fire. We are not ignorant of your devices. We shut down every witchcraft demon. We shut down every occulting demon. We shut down every promiscuity demon. When you come in one way, you flee in seven ways. We understand the reality of the realm of the spirit. The enemy wants the church to be ignorant. The enemy wants the church to be unassuming. The enemy wants Christians to fight Christians. One of the books that I've read 
about the operation of Satan and how he moves is a book called The Final Quest. The Final Quest is written by a man called Rick Joyner. I recommend that you pick that book and you understand how to navigate the supernatural and how to shut down satanic operation. If you were to be reading the book Final Quest where God gave Rick Joyner the vision of the advancing armies of the enemy. How Satan army is advancing. And this man of God painted in a clear pictorial way the picture of all of the different demon spirit and how they operate. Things like slander. How to slander other people. Some people don't understand that the enemy is waiting to pull, you know, to creep into their life with a spirit of slander. The spirit of jealousy. The spirit of division. The spirit of discord. All of these feelings that people have. And somebody say, I'm feeling in such and such a way. They do not understand that at that season, that it was in fact a, a demon spirit that was trying to gain advantage over them. The Bible says that we be not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Lest he takes advantage of us. The enemy is an opportunist. He's looking for a vulnerable small man in your life. For him to come in and for him to perpetuate something that will contradict the will of God. I want you to hear me tonight. You see, many believers have too many questions about the operation of demons. And the number one question that people have on their mind is... Can a Christian be in fact possessed with a demon? Especially when you have been saved and you've been full of the Holy Ghost and you've been delivered. You've been set free. You've been at church for too long. Can a Christian, can a Christian believer be full or be possessed by a demon? Now I, I, I treat it with that, with that title. In my book, I take authority over you, Satan. That is the not chapter number one. And though the book is sold out and it's out of print, but I feel a heaviness to reprint the book and translate it into Spanish and put it in your hands so that everybody can have access into understanding the tactics of the enemy. But tonight, I trust the Holy Ghost to help me to deal with some of those issues. And then in dealing with them, I'm going to try to deal with a few words. I'm going to play with some words now. The first word we want to look at is possess. What does it mean to be, to, to possess something? To possess means to take a legal ownership of something. When you possess something, it means you've taken a legal ownership of it. You own it. It's yours by a legal implication. When you have a deed of a house, the title deed of a building, then you possess the house. Oftentimes, whenever you are buying a real estate, there's something called possession date. The possession date is the day that you are going to claim what rightfully belongs to you. So you cannot possess something that's not yours. That's number one. The number two word I want to talk about is oppress. All right. So what does it mean to oppress? To oppress means to bring somebody under your compulsive will. To make somebody to do something that they do not ordinarily want to do. If you oppress somebody, it means that you have put somebody under your control. In a way that what they are doing is not exactly what they want to do. You are using your power. I want you to hear this. You are using your advantage. You are using your knowledge. You are using something that you know about a person to take advantage of them. That is to oppress. Okay. So the third word I want to deal with is to obsess. Okay. So the first one is to possess. in to oppress, and then to obsess. What does it mean to obsess? To obsess means to become addicted towards something to gain advantage of what you're obsessed by. Obsession is born out of a selfishness. 
if you are obsessed towards something, it means that you are trying to gain advantage of what you are obsessed by and you are trying, glory to God, to manipulate that thing towards your interest. Okay, so you have a compulsion towards something and you are trying to gain advantage of that thing towards your own interest. I want you to hear me tonight. Let's get back in the word of God. Now that I've dealt with all of those grammatical and vocabulary explanations, let's get back in the word of God. And let's begin to ask, how does the Bible classify or categorize the operation of a, a demon in the lives of a believer? Let me put it to you straight up tonight without missing words. Look in my eyes. That it is not possible for a Christian to be possessed by a demon. Okay, I'm just going to put it straight to you. It is not possible for a Christian to be possessed. I told you earlier that the word possess, it means something that gains a legal authority over you. Something that owns another thing. Okay, so a Christian He's already been given over to Jesus. I love the way Paul the apostle put it. He said, I have been bought with a price. Okay. He said, nevertheless, I live. It is no longer I that live, but Christ leaving me. Every genuine Christian believer that's in this room and every genuine Christian believer that are hearing me in different parts of the world tonight, you have been possessed by the spirit of God. Am I talking to somebody right now? You have been possessed already by the spirit of the living God. Jesus already lives in your life. When you are saved, born again, hallelujah, glory to God, and, and the Holy Ghost lives in you, it is not possible, okay, for the same vessel to be full with the spirit of God and for the same vessel to still be possessed by a demon. One servant cannot serve two masters. Come on, hear me somebody. Okay, there's a whole lot of people that looks like they are saved, but they ain't saved. Come on somebody. I'm not talking about the camouflage. I'm not talking about those that have the form of godliness, the appearance of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Come on somebody. I'm not talking about those people who have a big church title in front of their name, but they've not been to Calvary. Their sins have not been washed. Uh, somebody can give you a title. Salvation does not come by, for, by, by, by church title. Sometimes I ask some people, are you saved? And the answer they give me is, uh, I've been baptized. No, I'm not talking about you being put in water. Somebody can put you in water and almost still drown you in the water and you are still not saved. Regeneration, it comes from your heart. The Bible says, with the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become near. I'm not talking about people who claim to be in God and yet their lifestyle does not reflect the new nature. Come on somebody. If the Bible says shall we live in sin that grace will abound. Bible says God forbid. And so when you are saved, we got to know by your fruits. Come on. Come on talking to somebody. The Bible says by their fruits. Not by their preaching. Not by their title. Not by their charisma. But by their fruits. We shall know them. The fruits of righteousness. The fruit of holiness. You cannot be saved. And continue to live habitually in sin. The Bible says let it not be. So now that we get the phony out of the way, we get all the phony and all the fakes out of the way because there are some fakes and phony. Let's talk about the real people. I want you to lift your hand and raise your voice and say with me, I am saved. If you are not saved, don't talk. If you are saved, shout, say I'm saved. 
if you're not saved, just leave it and deal with it tonight. But if you if you are saved, saved, let every devil in the pit of hell hear you say, I'm saved. If you are at home, listen to me. The devil has no power to touch you. He has no right to touch you. He has no advantage. He has every illegal ground that is standing on. We're going to shut it down tonight. So I want to know the people that belong with God. If you are watching by Facebook tonight, I want you to type in, I'm saved. If you are in the building, I want you to lift your voice. Let every devil in the pit of hell hear you. Let every Satan hear you. Let every Thing that's trying for my God to come on your life. Let them hear that God has got you covered. Would you please lift your two hands, raise your voice, and declare I'm saved. I'm washed. I'm washed with the blood of Jesus. I'm a new creature. Saved by faith. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. All things in my life have become near. I'm a child of God. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm sanctified. I'm delivered. I'm living for the glory of God. The life that I live, it is not I that live it, but Christ Jesus anybody safe in the building do I have any child of God here is there somebody that the same spirit of God that's inside of me is the same spirit of God that's inside of you is there somebody here that we have a kindred spirit deep call it unto deep any child of God in the building anybody here that's on their way to the kingdom anybody here that loves the appearing of the king anybody here that's waiting for the Lord soon and very soon we are going to meet God we are living for the glory of God it doesn't matter what's going on in this generation we belong to God God has his people God still has somebody in the land my God am I talking to somebody everybody is not fornicating everybody is not lying everybody is He's not committing adultery. God has his people. Holiness unto the Lord. Anybody here believe that God is a holy God? Everybody's not lying and feeling excited about it. There are some people that still have holy repentance. There are some people that still cry and say, God, please create in me a clean heart and put the right spirit within me. The Bible says the foundation of God is standing sure. It has a seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Some things are not compatible. Am I talking to somebody? I said some things are not compatible. Your sin in the life of Christ is not compatible. It's night and day. They never miss. The problem with the church is because there's too much confusion. Everybody just think we can reduce the lost standard and bring him down to our level. You can offer God a polluted sacrifice. The Bible says offer your body. Am I the only one here tonight? Offer your what? Body. Unto God. Come on somebody. Offer your body. In a machinery of a heart, unto God, a living sacrifice that's holy.